Hello. Today I'd like to pose a very exciting challenge from the realm of vector calculus. Even though this is technically part of the tensor calculus series, you don't need any tensor calculus to understand these formulas and possibly to derive the formulas I'd like to talk about. So in my own research I came across two beautiful formulas and it turned out that one of them is uh, well known and not at all new and the other one is probably well known and not at all new although I'm yet to find the source that would mention this formula. And let me just describe what the formulas are. I will actually go ahead and record a few other lectures that explain the formulas, at least the first of them, but I'll delay posting them for about a week. So if you're interested, you have a chance of thinking about what these formulas could be. And I think uh, what happened to me was I, in the course of my research, I posed the question, but then the answer came relatively quickly. So here is the question. Let me describe it. So if you have a domain omega, which may be a two-dimensional domain in the plane or a three-dimensional domain in space, with a contour boundary S or a surface boundary in three dimensions. So everything I'll talk about applies to any number of dimensions, even probably one dimension. I'll have to think about that. So just knowing its boundary is enough to evaluate its area in two dimensions or its volume its three dimensions. So the area and the volume should be expressible as surface integrals because it, the shape alone is what matters for both of these quantities. So for volume, you can say if this was a domain integral, you could say that it's just the integral of one. The integral of one d omega of course equals area in two dimensions, volume in three dimensions. But that would be a domain integral and I want a boundary integral because once again the thinking is the shape alone is sufficient to determine the bulk and the surface area. Okay, but what are the requirements? The requirements is that the integral is only uses invariant quantities. So I don't want any coordinates in there. I want it to only use geometric quantities. So here's what you're allowed to use. The position vector, the normal, uh, curvature if you'd like, the tangent, the length of the tangent, okay, if, unless it's the unit tangent, it's one, but any of those pure geometric quantities that you can calculate without any reference to coordinate system. That's one requirement. So let me just mention that, of course, there's this well-known formula for area in two dimensions. I may have mixed up the minus sign, but I think it's correct. But this formula, it's very effective, but it doesn't satisfy the requirement I just mentioned because it requires an introduction of the coordinate system. So it's effective in actually evaluating areas, and it is a contour integral, just like I wanted it to be, but it falls short of our aspirations for today, which is to come up with a geometric integral. So on that basis, that's my criticism. <laughs> All right, that formula does not deserve to be criticized. It's just our goal today is a little bit different. So that's requirement number one. Requirement number two is that the formula, so geometric is number one, number two, is that the formula works in any number of dimensions, gives area in two dimensions, volume in three dimensions and can go even up from there and give generalized volume in four dimensions and so forth. That's requirement number two. Give me a moment to require to remember the requirement number three. <laughs> that it's a contour integral, that it's purely geometric, uh, that it works in any number of dimensions. I think that's pretty good. All right, so those are the requirements. I just think it's a priori clear that there should be such a formula. Again, the logic being that the shape, knowing the shape alone, is sufficient for knowing the enclosed volume and, of course, the area. So because it is sufficient, it should be expressible by an integral that lives on the surface, on the boundary. And, of course, we want the formula to be geometric just because we love geometry and we are a little bit 
cautious when it comes to very specific coordinate systems. So one more word about this formula. Of course, the one of the answers here is 1. The integral of 1 over the boundary is Uh, let me change the letter. Uh, this would be the area, and I guess this would be arc length. So this is in 2D, while in 3D, we're after volume, and I guess surface area, which I'll denote by S, overusing letters, and things like that. But the formulas need to be identical. So this formula should give you volume in three dimensions, and this formula should give you surface area in three dimensions. Ah, and the only question is, what goes here? That's the only question. Okay. And like I was saying, one of the possible things you can put in here is 1. Because the integral of 1 over the boundary is, of course, either the arc length of the boundary or the surface area of the boundary. So that's one of the things. That's one of the answers. And a uh, perfectly good one. So I'll just give one hint as to what I'm looking for here. because it will have some other nice applications. Uh, so what I want here is something very similar to what we have here with one little change. All right, that's the vaguest possible criteria you've ever heard, but that's all I have to say. So I'm about to record the answer. The answer is very interesting and nice, and it will invite us to talk about a few other things, which we will, uh, and then I'll post those videos in about a week. All right, enjoy, and Put your questions, thoughts, comments, either in the comments section or in a personal email to me. I'm always extremely happy to receive those emails. And it's happening a little bit more frequently now, and it's just a tremendous feeling to have a dialogue with my audience. All right. Good luck and enjoy.